Hi, am I in the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? John, I got you. John, Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's that grounded, I don't trust these ceilings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air High as next on the cloud Am I in the air, Sunday night's brown time I flex my better of Ultron, transform to DX Don Mega and unseen, you probably think I'm nice Cause I slow like a stream to your wireless device And the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best by I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Well, alright, alright, alright. What is going down, my friends? Welcome to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega, and I am your host. We are broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here in lovely Tucson, Arizona, on this Monday, August the 29th. It is season 24, it's episode 23, and tonight's show is titled, Not Enough Time. That's right, not enough time, man. There is not enough time in the world uh, for just, you know, your life. For movies, for video games, for friendships, for dinners, for work. I mean, there's just not enough. To... But that's a whole nother podcast. That's a whole nother story. You are here to get caught up with the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, reviews. Right here, baby, is what you come to for Am I on the Air? <clears throat> I have two non spoiler movie reviews for you guys. I'm going to talk about a couple TV shows real quick. And then, of course, We'll get into the news of the week, and we'll get you on up out of here, all right? Leaving you smarter than when you started, okay? So let's go into it, non-spoiler movie reviews. I'm going to start things off with my favorite movie of the weekend, and you know what? I don't care what the haters say. When it comes to comedies, the purpose of a movie is to laugh. And honestly, I laughed my ass off at this one. And this is the new movie, Me Time. Me Time hit Netflix this weekend, starring Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg. Uh, The story about this one is, with his family away, a devoted stay-at-home dad enjoys his first Me Time in years by joining his hard-partying old friend on a wild birthday adventure. So, Kevin Hart plays this stay-at-home dad, right? He... Loves his family, he's re- he's married to Regina Hall, and she's got a great career, so he stays at home with the kids, he's involved with the PTA, he's involved with drama class, you know, he's just involved all the way, great, great dad, but he never takes any time to himself. When the movie first starts, you get kind of a flashback scene, and this isn't really a spoiler thing, it's just kind of how the movie kicks off, where it shows, you know, he's best friends of Mark Wahlberg's character, but Mark Wahlberg's character is crazy, he always wants to do crazy ass shit every year for his birthday, and they kind of had a falling out, because Kevin Hart was like, yo, I'm settling down, I don't want to do this crazy shit no more, I just want to live my life, right? So they haven't talked to each other in a while, and he does get some me time, right? Regina Hall's character says, I'm going to take the kids to go see my parents, I'm going to give you some me time, you do you for a couple days, and get to just focus on yourself. So he decides to hit up Mark Wahlberg, and basically... uh, uh, Confirmed to go to his birthday party, the big 4-4, right? Uh, And, of course, the hilarity ensues from there because, of course, Mark Wahlberg's guy wants to do all this crazy shit. And, of course, as comedies would have it, hijinks ensue. And we're just off to the races at this point. So this movie... I mean, it's something you've seen before. In comedies, you've seen this exact story play out before. You've seen some of the same tropes play out before. But a movie is only so good as its leads. And I want to give kudos to Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg because I think they are hilarious in this movie. And I think their chemistry is good. I think they play well off of each other. And I just like their friendship. I liked how, 
crazy and free Mark Wahlberg's guy was, but then I liked how Kevin Hart was kind of, you know, more subdued, but trying to come out of his shell and trying to be the cool guy again. And I just, I laughed my ass off at this movie. I really, really liked it. And, and I've seen some mixed reviews. Some people either really like it or some people are saying it's really stupid and they don't like it. So comedy is very, very subjective. It really is. Um, it's just how things hit you. But like I said, for me, I rate comedies based on how much I laugh, how much I enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one and it was a really fun watch over the weekend. So I would give me time four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this one and wouldn't mind going back to watch it again. So that's me time. Um, my next movie here is another new release. Oh, by the way, Me Time is on Netflix. Sorry, I forgot. I might have forgot to mention that. So you could stream it right now for free in the comfort of your own home. Check out Me Time. Now, another new movie that came out that is a streaming movie is the new Sylvester Stallone superhero movie, Samaritan. Now, this movie was actually supposed to hit theaters this month, and then out of nowhere, about a month ago, Amazon Prime bought the rights to it, which I was like, man, that kind of sucks. I wanted to see this in the theater. Um, I kind of get why it was sold off at this point. Um, it's not anything great, but I also enjoyed watching this one. I did. Uh, and I, it might've been more of because it was at home and it was just chilling and it was a decent time for an at home watch. Um, maybe if I went to the theater, I'd be a little bit more disappointed, but basically the story about this one is 25 years ago, the world's greatest hero vanished. 13 year old Sam Cleary suspects that his mysteriously reclusive neighbor, Mr. Smith is actually the legendary vigilante Samaritan who was reported dead over 20 years ago with crime on the rise in the city of the brink of chaos. Sam makes it his mission to coax his neighbor out of hiding to save the city from ruin. So Sylvester Stallone, yes, plays Samaritan. He plays this kind of, you know, basically it tells this little story at the beginning of the movie about how there was this guy Samaritan and his nemesis and they fought to the death and basically both guys died over 20 years ago, never to be seen again. Um, but like it says in the synopsis, this little kid thinks, you know, there's something more to Sylvester Stallone's character and maybe he might be the Samaritan. <clears throat> so... The movie is kind of slow in the beginning. It drags a little bit, but when it gets going and, and Sly kind of comes out of his shell uh, and some of the action scenes start happening, I really found it to be a fun time, especially the finale of the movie, the big battle kind of at the end, I thought was a lot of fun, uh, especially in more of a, you know, direct to video at home kind of way. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, I think in the format of a prime movie, it works. You know, if it was in the theater, I'd probably be a little bit disappointed. This is a very 90s kind of comic book movie, so to speak. You'll, If you watch it, you'll understand what I'm saying. But I still enjoyed it. I love Sylvester Stallone. I thought the little kid was good. Um, I, I like the story. I like the concept. Um, so it was cool. I, it was something unique. And I, I enjoyed watching it at the end of the day. So I would give Samaritan three out of five stars when it comes to that. So there's your two movies. Check out me time on Netflix, check out Samaritan over on Amazon prime. Alrighty. Uh, and then on the TV side, I don't have anything new that I've seen. Um, we just, I just want wrapped up a couple things I wanted to touch on. So Superman and Lois. I just I finished season two, and I know I'm way behind on this one. I love season one, but for some reason, I just kept falling behind on season two. There was too much to watch. Season two went on HBO Max, so I was able to finally start just binging through it, and I thought it was a phenomenal season. There's a lot of stuff with Bizarro, and there's all kinds of mythology, and it was just really, really good. So I highly recommend you guys check out Superman and Lois season two. It was a fun ride, and I'm just so surprised and shocked at how good this show is, especially being on the CW. This feels like an HBO Max show, and it deserves the attention. So check that out. You can stream it all on HBO Max right now. And I just wanted to touch on She-Hulk, man. She-Hulk episode two dropped this past Thursday, and I'm still loving this show. This show is great. Uh, I love everybody in it. I don't know, man. This is another one that I'm seeing a lot of hate on, and I don't get why, because it is a fun show, and I can't every week I'm just like, ooh, I can't wait for the next She-Hulk episode. So I just wanted to say I'm still really enjoying it and can't wait for the next chapter this Thursday. 
Uh, on a real quick programming note, wanted to let y'all know that Elvis, the movie Elvis that came out over the summer, is going to officially hit HBO Max on Friday, September 2nd. So this Friday, you'll be able to check out Elvis. Uh, D- Jurassic Park Dominion, Jurassic World Dominion also hits Peacock this week on uh, Friday as well. And you'll be able to also watch the extended edition on Peacock, which is really cool. So some big streaming drops. Uh, and then for the kids, there was a movie that came out a couple months ago called uh, Paul's of Fury, The Legend of Hank, uh, which was something my daughter wanted to go see. And I just thought it looked horrible and I could not drag myself to the theater to see that one. But it is now officially streaming on Paramount+. Plus, So I wanted to shout that one out too. So a lot of new movies hitting your streamers. So for the kids, Paul's of Fury, Legend of Hank, that's on Paramount+. Plus. Elvis hits HBO Max on September 2nd on Friday, and Jurassic World Dominion also hits Peacock on Friday. So there's some streaming notes there. All right, with that all out the way, let's talk box office real quick. And this was the worst box office of the year. Very low performing weekend. Coming in number 10, Where the Crawl Dad Sing. Number 9, Thor Love and Thunder. Don't forget that comes out on September 8th on Disney+. Plus. Number eight is Minions Rise of Gru. Number seven is 3,000 Years of Longing. Number six is DC's League of Super Pets. Number five is Dragon Ball Super, Superhero. Number four is Top Gun Maverick. Number three is Beast. Number two is Bullet Train. And number one is the new horror movie, The Invitation. So congratulations for becoming number one. But check this out. It was number one with only $7 million. So that goes to show you how low performing this weekend's box office was that the number one movie in the world only made $7 million. Ouch. <clears throat> okay, guys, let's switch gears and let's get into our news of the week. There's a new comedy coming out in September on Hulu called Reboot, and uh, it's from the creators of Modern Family, and I loved this trailer that they dropped for it. It's got Keegan-Michael Key, and basically the concept is, is that there was this show Back in the 80s, kind of like a full house, and it fell apart. And then a writer, they're trying to pitch new ideas for the new fall season. And somebody comes up and says, hey, we should reboot that show with the original cast. And then trying to find the original cast. Some are in jail, some are addicted to drugs. You know, like everybody's doing different things, but they're trying to bring them back to do this reboot. Concept's awesome. Show looks awesome. Reboot hits Hulu on September 20th. Check out that trailer. Um, There's going to be more King Kong coming. Yes, a live-action King Kong series is headed to Disney+. Plus. Now, this is not attached to the MonsterVerse that's going on, right? We got Kong and Godzilla going on in one universe. This is kind of more going to be old-school King Kong. Uh, that's going to Disney Plus, so a different kind of version. So I didn't want to get that twisted because, of course, they're doing the Godzilla show over on Apple TV Plus. This is different. Disney Plus, old school King Kong, kind of going back to the classics. There, we have your first look at some Wakanda Forever toys for Black Panther, and it looks like uh, we get our first look at the Ironheart armor. Uh, that'll be displayed in one of the scenes. So check that out. If you're interested, I know some of you won't want to see it because it's a spoiler. Uh, She-Hulk head writer says Marvel had full control over Daredevil's suit. You know, they approved that Daredevil could be in the show, but they were like under one condition. He's got to have the yellow and red suit in this show, which was kind of crazy that that was their big uh, go-to on this one. But I thought it was kind of interesting. Big Mouth Season 6 is getting a teaser trailer, and you can check that out right now. Once again, all these trailers, everything we're talking about, head on over to our Twitter page, twitter.com slash am I on the air, and you can check out all the full trailers and news articles if you want to dig in a little bit deeper. Red Sonia. This is a movie they've been trying to make for quite some time, and it's been really difficult to get off the ground. But Matilda Lutz, along with uh, Robert Sheehan, has joined the cast, and filming has begun. That's right. Uh, so we'll see, man. I think this project's a little doomed, but we'll see what comes of it. Avatar re release is coming later in September, and they released a new trailer for it to tease its return to theaters. And man, watching this re release trailer got me in the feels. I cannot wait to go back to the IMAX and watch Avatar again in 3D. I'm so excited, and it's just going to really amp that up for Avatar 2 coming in December. So, looking forward to that. It's going to play uh, towards the end of September. Halloween ends. Is coming out in October. Of course, this is the third Halloween movie in this new trilogy that just came out. And they've announced 
that it will play day and date on Peacock simultaneously. So I was shocked by this because they did this last year with Halloween Kills. But we were still kind of coming out of COVID and theaters were still a little wonky. So it made sense, right? They were like, hey, we want everybody to see this movie. Because remember, Halloween Kills was supposed to come out two years ago. And then they pushed it a year and then COVID. So COVID was still happening. So they said, you know what? We're going to put it on Peacock. But I swear Blumhouse was like, you know what, though? Halloween ends going to be exclusively in theaters the way it was intended to be seen. Well, they must have backtracked on that because, yes, it is going to Peacock as well. So the same day and date. So when it hits theaters, it will hit Peacock. So I watched Halloween Kills on Peacock last year. I'm probably going to watch Halloween Ends on Peacock as well. So I don't know why they're doing it, man. The movie theaters are in full swing, so it really doesn't make any sense. Curb Your Enthusiasm Season 12 is officially confirmed by Larry David. So there you go. A lot of people are really excited about that. Paul Rudd officially joining Only Murders in the Building for Season 3. So great addition there, man. I love it. I'm way behind on Only Murders in the Building, so can't wait to catch up and get ready for that Season 3. Spider-Man No Way Home extended cut teaser trailer has dropped. It's very, very short. It's only about a minute long. But remember that uh, extended fun edition hits theaters this Friday on September 2nd. I already got my tickets, so ready to rock on that one. Uh, the Batman sequel is moving forward as it's just hired uh, writer Matson Tommen to uh, co- co-write it with director Matt Reeves. So moving along on that Batman movie. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis film has officially added Aubrey Plaza. So very cool there. We have the trailer for season two of Fate, the Wink Saga, which is, of course, coming to Netflix. We have the trailer for The Inspection. Jeremy Pope and Gabriel Union lead the upcoming A24 drama. Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power released its first full trailer uh, of the $1 billion series, man. I still can't believe how much money they spent on this damn Lord of the Rings. Um, I know my boy Friggins love this trailer, but, you know, I'm out on the show. I am out. Uh, the Batman 2 and Penguin series are officially set at Warner Brothers. Matt Reeves has signed a new deal with Warner Brothers directly, and those two are green locked, so that is awesome there. Jordan Peele's horror epic Nope has officially hit VOD, so you can now rent or buy it. Uh, Batgirl directors Adil El Arbi and Bilal Falal have discovered that Warner Brothers has deleted footage. From the servers, that's right They went on the server to try to get some stuff off of it And they said nothing was there Ooh, ooh, shady I've also heard that they've been screening this movie Across the Warner Brothers lot before it gets locked in the vault And, uh, yeah I heard, quote, it's an expensive CW pilot So, man, a little crazy that the movie really is that bad (laughs) I still can't believe that we're not getting this film The new Planet of the Apes is moving along, and Owen Teague has been cast as the lead primate in the upcoming film. We have the new Cobra Kai poster. Yes, Cobra Kai Season 5 premieres on September 9th. We're very, very close, and I'm very, very excited. I can't wait. My guilty pleasure show right here. No mercy, Cobra Kai. Uh, Big Mouth Season 6 premieres October 28th on Netflix. Over on Netflix as well, September 23rd, we have a new uh, action movie called Lou, starring Allison Janney and Jernay Smollett, um, <clears throat> where they're hunting down a kidnapper. Once again, that'll hit Netflix on September 23rd. Emily D. Chanel has uh, got a new movie called Devil in Ohio, which premieres on September 2nd over on Netflix. We got the official full casting for Glass Onion, the Knives Out mystery, of course, Knives Out 2, Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., Jessica Henwick, Madeline Klein, Kate Hudson, and Dave Batista, all star. Very, very cool there. Um, it's going to hit select theaters on a date to be announced in the future, and globally will hit Netflix on December 23rd. Mariel Enos will play Bob Odenkirk's wife on an upcoming AMC dramedy that they're putting together. It's going to be called Straight Man. So now they better call Saul's over. We're moving on to the next one. Legend of Tomorrow's Lisith Chavez has joined ABC's The Rookie for season five. Um, let's see here. Sorry, just skipping through a couple pieces. Um, 
Remember, September 2nd is when the Lord of the Rings show will hit Amazon Prime Video. And uh, the first two episodes are playing in limited release in theaters. So some of you might want to go check and seek that out. Uh, Warner Brothers doing some date shifting, man. Some of it was okay. Others of it pissed me off. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, So Warner Brothers Discovery has officially set the release dates for the upcoming horror film Evil Dead Rise. Which will hit theaters on April 21st, 2023 The Nun 2 hitting theaters on September 8th, 2023 And the remake of the comedy film House Party will hit December 9th, 2023 As well as the Salem's Lot remake Which was supposed to come out this year Got pushed to April 21st of 2023 And is now off the April date And just says to be decided in 2023 So man, that that's horrible for this film I hate the to be determined kind of thing Warner Brothers has also set a date For a currently unknown film That's labeled as an untitled WB event film Which will release on February 10th 2023 no word on what the project is um so very interesting there on um, that <clears throat> now the piece that pisses me off is because now we're effing with the dc universe so we're just a couple months away from getting shazam well shazam is now in 2023 and aquaman 2 you're gonna have to wait about another eight months to get that one as well too I'm really pissed. Shazam Fury of the Gods and Aquaman The Lost Kingdom have moved once again. After being moved up to December 21st, 2022, the Shazam sequel has been moved back into 2023, and the new film will now release on March 17th, 2023. God, that pisses me off. Shazam, March 17, 2023. Additionally, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom, which was supposed to come out this year, has been well, it was supposed to be this year, it was supposed to be around Christmas, then it got moved to March. Now it's been moved to December 25th, 2023. That's right, Christmas of 2023. You now get Aquaman 2. It was supposed to come out in March of 2023, moved all the way back to December of 2023. Horrible, man. Horrible. I don't know what DC is doing These movies are done Flash was already moved all the way to June And we kind of understood with the Ezra stuff Why are we shifting these things So goddamn much Why? These movies are done Done son Like how do you take Shazam from 2023 Move it into 2022 and then say Psych and move it back into 2023 I don't understand the movement But You know, it's a lost cause. This is what's happened. We got to wait to 2023 to get these films, and it sucks. Fred Durst and Phoebe Bridgers have joined A24's upcoming TV show, I Saw the TV Glow. I saw the TV Glow. Uh, So there you go. Fred Durst, man. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's Alternate Side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing. Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Uh, We have the trailer for The Handmaid's Tale Season 5. I know a lot of you are excited about that, so check that out. Hellraiser remake coming at the end October over on Hulu. I'm looking forward to this, man. I love Hellraiser, so I can't wait to see an updated reboot of this. Amazon's Roadhouse reboot starring Jake Gyllenhaal has officially begun filming. We have the trailer for the live-action Pinocchio film, which will also debut on Disney Plus September 8th on Disney Plus Day. Speaking of Jason Momoa, Aquaman himself, he's got a new Netflix fantasy adventure film called Slumberland, which comes out later this year, and the first trailer has dropped. Looks cute, man. I think my daughter really enjoyed that one. Ryan Reynolds-led whodunit film Clue. Yes, Clue is still happening. They've uh, found some new screenwriters for it, and they're still touching it up, so I guess it's still on the docket. We have the trailer for Goodnight Mommy, which is Naomi Watts leading Amazon's horror remake. 
Uh, I saw the uh, foreign version of this movie years ago, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they could do with the new English-led remake here with uh, Naomi Watts. Shang-Chi's Simu Lu is set to play the villain in Jennifer Lopez's upcoming movie, Atlas. So I like that, man. I love Simu Lu, and I love to see him in a villain role. I think that'd be pretty damn cool. Congratulations to the movie Secret Headquarters. The Owen Wilson-led superhero movie on Paramount Plus is now the most watched Paramount Plus movie ever. So congratulations there to Secret Headquarters. I love it. Jason Momoa talks about his quirky and androgynous villain character in the upcoming Fast X. So check that out if you're interested to know more about his character. Netflix is going to has secured the rights to LeBron James' upcoming Olympics documentary. Euphoria shocker over here, Barbie Ferreira says that she will not be back as Cat in the upcoming season three. So some shifting there. A Christmas Story sequel with original film stars gets an HBO Max release date at the end of the year. So that is still coming. It is a thing. Peacock is set to drop the price on the premium tier as it becomes the new home for next day streaming of shows like One Chicago, SVU, SNL, and a whole bunch more. So to kind of shine some more light on that, basically Peacock, or NBC I should say, shares the rights to a lot of these shows with Hulu. So if you go on Hulu and you go on Peacock, there's a lot of the same shows on there. Well, they're pulling all the stuff off Hulu. So basically, if you know how everything streams the very next day, so you're not going to be able to stream that stuff on Hulu anymore. They're moving it all over to Peacock, so they want to boost subscribers over there. So due to that, they're also going to bring down the price uh, on the premium tier so more people will sign up to watch that stuff. So very, very cool on Peacock to do that. Law and Order SVU shocker, Kelly Gadish is out as Rollins after 12 seasons on the show. That's insane, man. Wonder what happened there. Scott Kahn and Dania Ramirez are set to headline a new show called Alert, which will be on Fox. It's going to be a missing persons procedural. So sounds good to me. I love Scott Kahn. Loved him on Hawaii Five O. Down to check out a little something something. Sleepy Hollow's Nicole Beher has joined the morning show for season three. Law and Order is going to have a three-way crossover event confirmed for its premiere. So there you go, man. We're going to have Law and Order, SVU, and Organized Crime all in a three-part crossover. Celebrity Jeopardy. Simu Lu popping up again. He's one of the uh, contestants that will be in the Mayim Bialik hosted primetime edition of the Celebrity uh, Jeopardy edition that's coming down the pike here. Um... Let's see here. Yeah, Peacock. Peacock sets dates for next day streaming of NBC shows. We were just talking about that. That's going to hit in September. So that's when everything will kind of migrate over. Uh, so we talked about Simu Lu joining the Jennifer Lopez movie Atlas. Well, also Sterling K. Brown and Abraham Pupola have also joined the upcoming Netflix sci-fi thriller. I love this cast. I love everybody here. Simu Lu is awesome. Sterling K. Brown is awesome. Abraham is awesome. So yeah, great, great stuff. Directed by Brad Payton. I have some high hopes for this one, man. I love me some Jennifer Lopez, so let's go. Uh, Blonde, the highly anticipated um, Marilyn Monroe movie with Anna de Armas, is hitting Netflix officially on September 28th, so get ready for that. Um, Slumberland hits Netflix on November 18th. That's the new Jason Momoa one we just talked about. Bioshock, a live-action feature film adaptation of the renowned video game franchise, will be directed by Francis Lawrence, who did I Am Legend and The Hunger Games, uh, from a script written by Michael Green. So there you go, man. We're getting that Bioshock movie. Very interesting. Sean Cunningham, uh, who is a producer on the Friday the 13th films, teases that a new movie is coming. So take that for what you will. A lot of times these side people like to confirm stuff that is nothing to confirm, but... I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, Marvel Studios might have have a Fantastic Four director. Hmm? Uh, We're hearing reports that Matt Shankman has been tapped to direct Fantastic Four. Now, we're supposed to get official word on everything Fantastic Four um, coming on D23. We're supposed to get a cast, we're supposed to get director, we're supposed to get everything confirmed. We'll see if that happens. But that's the word. Matt Shankman, he was po- he was supposed to direct Star Trek 4, 
and he'd magically just dropped out for scheduling conflicts. And now this word comes out about Fantastic Four. I think Fantastic Four is the scheduling conflict. Matt Shankman, of course, directed WandaVision, which gets me very excited to see what he would do with Fantastic Four. So I'm super, super down with that. We have the trailer for Mac and Rita. Diane Keaton leads the upcoming comedy film. Uh, Don't Worry Darling, the new movie coming out Directed by Olivia Wilde that has Florence Pugh Looks like a great movie Um, Found out that Shia LaBeouf Was originally supposed to be in the movie And he was replaced by Harry Styles Now we were told that Olivia Wilde fired uh, Shia LaBeouf Because it just didn't work out Right, His acting methods were a little too uh, For the movie But Shia came out and was like, yo, 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 don't get it twisted. I was not fired. I quit the movie. And he had proof that he quit. So a little bit of he said, she said coming out of this movie. So I'll leave that at there because we don't like to get into gossip. But thought it was interesting just to point out. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He has officially joined the cast of The Boys Season 4. So let's go, baby. I love that. That's awesome. We have the teaser trailer for Tar starring Kate Blanchett. as she leads a new biopic. For focus features The Umbrella Academy is officially going to end With season 4 So I'm not a fan of the Umbrella Academy But I know a lot of people are And yes, it is wrapping up With season 4 Horizon Zero Dawn is officially moving forward As a Netflix series And it will feature the character Aloy So there you go, a lot of people wondering Who would it focus on And that's where it's going DC looks to have found their Kevin Feige. We talked about this before as uh, the new owners of D- of Warner Brothers and DC wanted to get their own Kevin Feige. They want to do this 10-year plan and they want to push forward. And it looks like producer Dan Lin is in talks with DC to become that Kevin Feige role. So hopefully he's a good fit for it. I mean, I hope that there's one good vision for DC and we can just move along, man. We have the trailer for Confess Fletch, starring John Hamm, of course, as the updated new version of the Fletch movie that used to star Chevy Chase back in the day. Godzilla vs. Kong sequel is officially moving forward. It sounds like a team-up movie. They've started filming, and it sounds like they're going to be teaming up to fight a bigger threat. So let's go, baby. Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, Let's see here. We talked about that. We talked about that. Uh, let's see. Prime Video is exclusively doing some Thursday night football. That's right. We have their official slate that kicks off on September 15th football that you can watch on Prime Video. So expanding that out, I like it. Um, The Walking Dead Dead City is the new title of Isle of the Dead spinoff starring Jeffrey D. Morgan and Lauren Cohen as Negan and Maggie. So there you go. It was supposed to be called. Uh, Isle of the Dead, and now it's going to be called The Walking Dead, Dead City So a name change there on that one uh, Netflix and producer Sean Levy Are reteaming for a new limited series uh, That's going to be called Perfect Couple Which is a murder mystery So I love it, I'm already down Let's go Mike Judge, Greg Daniels ben, uh, Bandera has officially landed A new animated comedy Over at Peacock So there you go, Best Buds is what it's going to be called I'm down for that as well Thomas Hayden Church is officially joining Kevin Costner In his upcoming Western Horizon Um, Roadside Attractions has striked a new output deal with Hulu For a pay one window, which means all the Roadside Attraction movies Will go to Hulu after they're in theaters So very, very cool there James Cameron's Avatar will return to theaters nationwide and overseas on September 23rd In a new remastered 4K high dynamic range And of course 3D the way it was meant to be seen So September 23rd guys, let's do it Resident Evil, the TV show, has been cancelled after just the one season After an underwhelming performance And I agree, guys, I like Resident Evil I tried to watch this show, I watched three episodes and I gave up And I don't really give up on shows, I tried to see it through But Resident Evil sucked And I'm not shocked that this thing's been cancelled already It just debuted last month and it's already out the Dow Uh Netflix has a new series coming called Blockbuster, which stars Randall Park And, um, oh man, I forget her name, but she was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine And I love her so much Um, but it's a workplace comedy Uh, it comes out later this year And I'm so excited, so check out Blockbuster when it drops I think it's gonna be a really, really good one 
Michael Showalter is set to direct Anne Hathaway in her new romance pick, The Idea of You. Catherine Watterson is joining Jodie Comer in the upcoming apocalyptic thriller film, The End We Start From. Uh, Miles Teller is set to lead a new action film from Scott Derrickson. I like the sound of that. House of the Dragon Season 2. It's coming, baby. It's already been renewed after just one episode. It was renewed because, of course, it was the biggest debut like ever for HBO. So it was no shocker there that they'd renew it quickly for Season 2. Um, the Crow reboot, Danny Houston is joining the Bill Skarsgård, uh, project, I believe is the vil- main villain. So good to see that that's still moving forward. Ezra Miller met with Warner brothers to, uh, try to save the movie talking about the flash. They met to kind of talk about how they're going to move forward on this film. So I like that they're collaborating. I like that. He looks like he's trying to get his shit together. So I'll leave that one there. Idris Elba's new movie, Beast, which we actually just reviewed on last week's episode, really like this one. Uh, it will be on Peacock before Halloween. So there you go. So it will be coming straight to Peacock within the next two months. Orphan Black Echoes, a new TV series they're putting together, has just added Amanda Fix and Avon Jogia to the cast. Um, Floribama Shore is not returning for season five on MTV with the future of the show in limbo. Ghost has added Gilmore Girls Rose Abdu in uh, a no nonsense season two role. So I like when they label stuff like that. Uh, NBC says they may bail on the 10 p.m. hour. So we'll see what they do with that. That's kind of interesting right there. Um, let's see here. Tyler Perry's sisters uh, show over on BET, the spinoff Zatina, uh, Zatima is getting uh, a premiere date over on BET Plus and has revealed its full cast. So you can check that out if you're interested. Daily Pop and Nightly Pop have been canceled over on the E! Network. Uh, Noah Baumbach is directing Adam Driver and Greta Gerwig and Don Cheadle in the upcoming movie White Noise, which will be coming soon to Netflix. Batman Cape Crusader is receiving intense interest from multiple streamers. This is an animated series that was supposed to go to HBO Max, got canceled, and now it looks like it's in a bidding war at the other streamers, so we'll see what happens on that. Echo, the Marvel show, has officially wrapped production, so they filmed that really quick, man. I feel like they just started filming that thing. Um, John Boyega developing a story for Attack the Block sequel with the director Joe Cornish. So it looks like they still really want to move forward on that sequel, so very cool there. Um, Yeah, so House of the Dragon renewed for a second season after the first episode ratings climbed to 20 million viewers. God damn, a lot of people watching that show. I am not one of them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just can't do it. We have the season five teaser and premiere for Yellowstone coming out in a couple months. So check that out. Yellowstone season five teaser. Apple TV plus series Lady in the Lake is officially halted production following a violent threat and extortion attempt. What the hell? Yeah. Natalie Portman is the lead in this show and there's some crazy shit going on. So they have halted production to make sure everything's safe before they move forward. Power Rangers season 30 sets a 2023 premiere and the full Dino Fury cast will be returning. Uh, so there you go. I know a lot of you love your Power Rangers. We have the complete list of winners from this past weekend's VMAs. Check that out. Uh, movie theaters offering $3 tickets this Saturday, September 3rd, for National Cinema Day. That's right. Every movie, three bucks of pretty much every movie chain. So there you go. The fourth season of Manifest on Netflix will arrive on November 4th. And a lot of you have been waiting for that, so there you go. November 4th, it is coming. Tessa Thompson and Joseph Gordon-Levitt are set to lead a new sci-fi thriller called Ash. Speaking of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he's just joined the cast of Beverly Hills Cop 4. So, yes, we're moving forward. We're casting. Let's go. Eddie Murphy coming back. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Taylor Page joining the cast. Um... Very, very cool there. We have the new trailer and poster for Weird, the Al Yankovic story, which comes in November, starring Daniel Radcliffe. Um, Looks really good, so check that out. William Friedkin is set to direct Kiefer Sutherland in the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. Tusk 2? Justin Lin says that Kevin Smith is preparing for more walrus mayhem. Guys, I love Kevin Smith so much. Tusk is a piece of shit. Like, we should never get a sequel to Tusk. I fucking hate this movie. 
Like, I was like, what was he smoking when this film got put together? Do not give me Tusk 2. Please work on something else. Focus on mall rats. Focus on some other shit. Leave Tusk alone. Liam Neeson, his new noir crime thriller directed by Neil Jordan called Marlowe is being released in December. Catherine O'Hara, Andy Garcia, Jade Duplass uh, have been added to David Yates' Netflix film, The Pain Hustlers. Um, let's see here. Chicago PD shocker Jesse Lee Sofer is set to exit as Halstead during season 10. We also have a cast member of the Connors leaving ahead of season five. I'll leave that up to you if you want to find out that. Days of Our Lives episodes my, may wind up being longer now that they're on Peacock. So there you go. So you might actually get a longer episode because no commercials. It's on Peacock. Let's see what they do with it. The Vow Part 2 is coming. Man, the Vow Part 1 was slow and boring. I can't believe they're doing a Part 2. It is, is exploring the Nixium founders' innermost circle. And you can watch that trailer right now. I, I think I'm going to have to pass on the Vow Part 2. But the trailer's there for y'all. Thai Cave Rescue. We have the first trailer for the Netflix documentary series, so check that out. Chris Rock says he was invited to host the 2023 Oscars, and he has declined it. He says, no, thank you. I don't want to be in that situation again. Sunday, this past Sunday's House of the Dragon drew 10.2 million viewers across all platforms, according to a combination of Nielsen and HBO Eternal Data, which is a 2% increase from the premiere. So, man, this show continuing to bump, which is cool. We got the Season 2 trailer for The Kardashians. Yes, some people still love this one, so check it out. Less than a week after announcing that Barbie Ferreira was leaving Euphoria, she has found a new gig. She's going to star alongside Ariana DeBose in the upcoming thriller House of Spoils. So, very cool there. And on that note... That is the end of our show, my friends. That's it. That's what we got. So thank you so much for coming in right at that 40-minute mark. Beautiful. I'm going to let you guys get to it. Hey, make sure you bookmark our website, amiontheair.com. It's where everything is. Make sure you do it, amiontheair.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. If Apple's not your thing, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. We're on everything. Make sure you subscribe wherever is convenient for you. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Am I on the Air. Follow me on Twitter at DXDonMega. Make sure you like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Am I on the Air. Very easy. Give us a like. Uh, make sure you follow us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Very simple. Am I on the Air? Follow along. We got some really cool videos on TikTok and Instagram. Support your boy. Uh, and you could always support your boy in the link of the show notes there where it's got the Cash App handle. And you could support your show, you can support your show, support your boy. With whatever you want. So just thank you for listening. And of course, our great affiliates, reddragonsradio.com, pop culture pros. Thank you as always for streaming us on demand. That's going to do it for me on this Monday, August the 29th. Like I said, we're going to be seeing that new extended version of Spider Man this Friday. And then we'll see what else comes around before next week's new edition. So till then, y'all, take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!